Order. Roll call, Cassandra. Cassandra, you're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Okay. Here. I have no idea what she's saying. Cassandra, right. yours is terrible. The connection. Oh, I got that. You're frozen. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I hearing got, anything. Got, got, here. Oh. Okay. District 2, Lachos. Here. District 3, Burns. Yes. District 4, Gilbert. Here. District 5, Chartrand. Here. District 6, Morhan. District 7, Colzer. Here. District 8, Dalha. Here. District 9, Osborne. Here. District 10, King. Here. Will we stand and face a flag for the pledge? Pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, the flag of the United States, United States, States of America, America. The Republic, the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, 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 God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice liberty. for all. The third three three twenty twenty me meeting minutes have been distributed. If there's no amendments, uh, they will stand approved. Report, Report of the Finance and Rules Committee for Rule Six, Cassandra. The finance I can hear coming. Met and they waive the rules for late resolutions. Need a motion to respect the report. So we'll move number three. Second. Second by James. Um, Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, privilege to the floor. Because um, uh, Laura is having difficulties with the computer. So, hang on just a minute. Let's see if Doug is here. See if we can get it straight out. I'm waiting for you to read uh, the comments. Sorry about that. Um, okay, regarding the CDBG program, in September of 2017, Lewis County applied for 282,975,000 in funding through the Community Development block grant program for the Lewis County Direct Homeownership Assistance Program 2017. The first public hearing was held on September 5th, 2017 in preparation for the application and a second public hearing is being held today to provide residents with the opportunity to offer any comments on the accomplishments of the grant. The CDBG program requires two public hearings. The goal of the program was to assist low and moderate income households to purchase their first home by pro providing a buy down on the mortgage, payment of closing costs, and assistance to rehabilitate the housing unit to ensure that it meets code and housing quality standards as developed by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. This application was successful and the county was awarded $282,975. The grant agreement stipulated that all funds must be expended within 24 months or by December 10th, 2019. But an extension was granted until March 31st, 2020. 
the application anticipated that seven households would be assisted with estimated program funds of 175,000 for mortgage buy down and closing costs and 70,000 for rehabilitation of the purchased homes. An additional $37,975 was used for administration and program delivery assistance, bringing the total grant amount to $282,975. The program is now completed with nine homes assisted to more than projected. The average down payment and closing costs assistance provided was $17,767. Two of the closed homes didn't need any repairs, including one that was purchased from Habitat for Humanity. The average repair cost was $9,561, with ranges from $6,800 to $20,250. The average total grant provided was $27,462. The average purchase price was $74,584, and the average mortgage was $68,188. There was no displacement as the homes that were purchased were either vacant or, in one case, purchased by the existing tenant. The program is truly a countywide program in that one home purchase was in the village of Lyons Falls, one in the town of Krogan, one in the hamlet of Beaver Falls, two in the town of Diana, two in the village of Lavell, and two in the town of Denmark. Any person seeking to submit comment may do so by mailing their comments to the clerk of the board, Lewis County Courthouse, 7660 North State Street, Lavell, New York, 13367, or electronically by email to Cassandra Mosier at lewiscounty.ny.gov. Said comments must be received by the clerk of the board on or before May 1st, 2020. Okay, and these are the public comments that were submitted regarding local law number 3-2020. Um, the first one is submitted from Gary Rozakowski. What are you thinking? Thousands and millions of Americans are laid off work. Many of their jobs will not be back when this virus has passed. Farmers are dumping milk worth thousands of dollars. There is no way that this economy after this pandemic has passed will skyrocket, like our government is saying. I am not sure who is behind pushing for this, but they should be ashamed. Passing this proposed law would be extremely inconsiderate to the general public. We are not in a time of business as usual. The general public is suffering and I believe they will be outraged if you pass this local law. In addition, I believe that the building projects that you are proposing should be put on the shelf and leave them there. I suppose, I propose, that you maintain your existing facilities and question yourself why weren't they maintained. <clears throat> Taxpayers are in no position to take on more burdens. The next comment is from Susan Sauer. Honorable legislators, in regards to the proposed salary increases for county manager and human resource manager, I would urge you to put this and all spending on hold until we see the end of COVID-19. What percentage of our population is without work? How long will it be before they'll be back to work? When will our children be back in school and what will the state aid to schools look like? What will happen to the STAR program? How much revenue will the county lose in sales tax this year? How about CHIPS funds? How many taxpayers will die? I don't think the county or any local municipalities should be giving anyone a raise or voting to purchase anything that isn't absolutely necessary or at least until you can answer these questions. None of us asked for this crisis and we're all in it together. So I hope you legislators keep that in mind when you make future financial decisions because it affects all of the residents in the county. I'm sure the county manager and human resource manager can live on their current salaries for this year and bite the bullet like the rest of us. The next comment is from the Reverend David Mahali. As a senior citizen who recently lost over 20,000 in the stock market due to the economic downturn, I feel it is important that the legislative body rescinds all administrative pay increases and nixes the bonding issue in order to start building a new county complex. The next comment is from Carl Sauer. I feel this is not the time to spend taxpayer money on salary increases. Many people are out of work and we don't know when this will be over. Until we see where things end up, we shouldn't be spending any money unless we have to. Let's deal with the virus right now and then look at these types of things when it is over 
and things are back to normal. The next comment is from Valerie Getman. I cannot believe that anyone at this specific time would vote for another for anyone to get a raise. People are out of work, either laid off or terminated. Towns and villages have no idea where they are going to get money for their budget. Businesses are closed, so you are not collecting sales tax revenue, and you have the nerve to want to give two people a raise at this time. Are you friggin' kidding me? We have no money. I hope enough people have seen this notice to respond. Again, my comment is absolutely not. Upset taxpayer. The next comment is from Tom Freeman. At a time when people are unemployed and losing their jobs to this virus, how can you justify a raise for these people? And what have they done for this county to deserve the raise? And why is there such a law that a raise is mandatory? Taxpayers should vote on all raises. And the last comment is from Stephen Allen. I was made aware that at tomorrow's legislative meeting, there will be a discussion on proposed raises for the county manager and HR director. I presume both are doing a fine job. This, however, isn't the appropriate time to be giving raises to public admin positions. Many taxpayers are no longer working for county, working or working fewer hours. This county, this certainly wouldn't be the appropriate message to send to them. In addition, the county manager recently opined that the likelihood of severe budget problems given the sure decline in tax in sales tax revenue. If you're looking for a compass to guide you in your public decision making, a good suggestion is to ask yourself, what would a private business do with its employees in, such, in times such as these? The answer is, I think we better postpone any increases until we get a better picture of where our budget will be when this turmoil is over. Unfortunate for the county manager and HR director, but that's life, particularly in higher compensated positions. Presentation of petitions, communications, and notices. Legislators have received several letters and emails for residents voicing their opinions for, for and against the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance since the March 3rd legislative meeting. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Reports of county officers and departments. All legislators have received copies of the Treasurer's March Report, the March 13th and March 25th Highway and Solid Waste Department Audit Reports, and the First Quarter Bed Tax Report of 2020. Legislators received copies of the 2019 Annual Report from the Department of Social Services. James Richmeyer submitted the February Sealer of Weights and Measures Activity Report, and Brian Mooney, the new director, submitted the March Sealer of Weights and Measures Activity Report both have been placed on file with the clerk of the board. That is it. Thank you. Reports of standing committees. Tom, finance and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. The motion is to approve the general liability insurance renewal package with Eastern Shore Associates through NYMIR for a period of 4-5-2020 through 4 5 2021 for a total premium of two hundred and twelve thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars and twenty seven cents moved by don second by jerry jerry uh, any discussion yeah i have one question how much did it increase um it was very minimal round do we have a number? I don't have an exact number. Part of it was there was an increase, but part of it was that because we have more vehicles. And we have a number of 2.7%. What you said? Over the last year. The number was that we, we have more vehicles. I didn't hear that. I didn't either. It's a 2.7% increase over the last year. But the majority of that increase is due to the fact that we have uh, more vehicles included in the plan. Are you saying 2.7%, Larry? Correct. Okay, thank you. 
Any other questions, jury? In favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other calls? Motion carries. Thank you, John. I don't Thank think you. they can hear you there. Back to you, Tom. Yeah, we can That's barely all. hear Larry. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. okay. Thanks. Any questions for Tom? We'll move on to uh, Jerry with Services. Larry, why don't you come over here and use this one? Nobody can hear you over there. I just got a text from them. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Better. Okay. If there's no other questions for Tom. We'll move on to Jerry with General Services. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three motions, and I'll make the first one a motion to award bituminous oil bids based on project location in accordance with the tabulation of all bids prepared by highway superintendent and placed on file with the clerk of the board for the period of 4 1 2020 to 3 31 2021. And that's a motion. Move by Jerry, second by Bill. Bill, any discussion? Jerry, I didn't understand the motion. Can you do it? Repeat it. Yeah, it's a motion to award bituminous oil bids based on project location in accordance with the tabulation of all bids prepared by the highway superintendent and placed on file with the clerk of the board for the period of 4-1-2020 to 3-31-2021. And this was, the lowest, this was the lowest bid, right, Jerry? Uh, it depends on the location, Ron. If there's more than one bid, if they got a haul a long ways, there, there may be a small percentage before, but what we've done in the past, that if, if we, you know, we'll go to wherever we can to save a little bit. Okay. So that was moved by Jerry. Do I have a second, Bill? Yeah. Any further discussion? Doesn't doesn't the uh, doesn't that contract have a variable in it in case the price goes down dramatically? I doubt it. It, it usually never goes down. It goes the other way, usually. But the price of oil right now is going down. Yeah, but they're bidding on last year's oil right now. Okay. It's stuff they bought last fall okay. and putting their tanks and stuff like that. Now, maybe later in the year, it might change. Okay. Okay. Um, then I have another motion. Motion to award. Wait a second. Oh, Wait a oh, second. Sorry, go ahead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Opposed? Um, motion to award hot asphalt mix bids based on project location in accordance with tabulation of all bids prepared by the highway superintendent and placed on file with the clerk of the board. For the period of 4 1 2020 to 3 31 2021. And I'd like to make that a, another motion. Moved by Jerry, second by Ron. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and then uh, motion to authorize Buildings and Grounds Supervisor Matt O'Connor to put out an RFQ for a recommission survey of 
PSB HABC system. And essentially what that's going to do, because the jail's been changed up there over time, is just to make sure our heat and air is putting out the way it should, because we're talking about putting a new furnace and stuff in. We want to make sure everything's adequate. Moved by Jerry. Second by um. Tom. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have at this point in time. Any questions for Jerry? If not, we'll move on to Randy with Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've just got a couple of things here. Um, first and foremost, I just want to acknowledge all of our employees who have met the challenge of this COVID-19 pandemic with personal sacrifices and have gone above and beyond their normal daily routines to meet the needs of all of our citizens in Lewis County. This has not been an easy task, especially when the new normal is nowhere near as fun as what it used to be. And tempers and tolerance levels are at all time low. And our frontline employees are taking the storm head on. And with no real words to express my true feelings, thank you for all being there for all of us. And I have a quick note from Jenny Jones. I reached out to her to see if she had anything and she just wanted me to mention, and I see we have a, um, proclamation for this as well. But April is Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month. And given the current pandemic and everyone staying home much more, it's more important to pay attention to children. Please call and check in on your neighbors and family members, especially hired to keep children home and occupied 24 seven. So if there's any issues you run across, please call the State Child Abuse and Maltreatment Registry if you hear of any child being abused or maltreated. The number is 1-800 three four two three seven two zero and that's all i have mr chairman thank you randy any questions for randy if not we'll move on to dick the board's rep representative on the hospital board okay thank you larry uh you've all been getting the reports from uh public health and from jerry day to day on the coronavirus we've got a couple of actions uh, later on in the agenda here tonight that we'll talk about at that time and Jerry and I would entertain questions at this time that you have. Any questions for Dick or Jerry? If not, we'll move on to the county manager report, right? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, couple things to note uh, we the CDC has now uh, changed their guidance regarding masks so um, we have uh, changed our policy here in the county I sent you guys this policy via email um, earlier in the week but basically anybody who's in a county building visitor or staff um, is going to need to be wearing a mask if they're in a common area um, that's you know bathrooms hallways break rooms lobbies um, employees that are at their workstation can take their masks off at that time. Um, we are encouraging all members of the public to use a mask if you are in a, a public space. If you leave your house, go to the grocery store, wherever you may be, um, we're asking that people follow the CDC guidelines and uh, use a mask. Um, the PAUSE New York uh, governor's executive order is extended through April 29th. That means no school until April, after April 29th. That means our businesses, non-essential businesses, remain closed until after April 29th as well. Um, today, we are announcing a new initiative with Pat Freilich's office uh, for community um, services called Take Five New York. This is an idea put forward by NISAC, and it's a pretty simple concept. Basically, when we're all kind of isolated at this time in our own homes, uh, we're saying take five, which is five minutes to call someone who is a relative or uh, someone, a neighbor that you know is isolated, might be by themselves. Take five minutes to give them a call, see how they're doing, make sure they have all the supplies they need, make sure they're, they're using social distancing and uh, you know, kind of share your feelings about how you're doing as well. Uh, make sure we stay connected, especially to those that are on their own. So take five New York, we're saying take five Lewis County, take five minutes every day to call somebody Pretty simple concept for initiative. 
Um, we're also putting out uh, a guidance on the um, stimulus package that was passed through the federal government. Um, there is a really amazing provision for local businesses called the Paytech Paychecks Protection Program. And that program needs to uh, basically, it gives small businesses and not-for-profits the ability to get a payroll loan so they can you know, to lay off their employees. They can continue to fund that payroll through the COVID crisis. Um, and at the end, as long as those employees are hired back at the end of the crisis, that loan will be 100% forgiven by the federal government. So we put out a list today of all the financial institutions in Lewis County and their procedure for um, executing this loan. It's through the Small Business Associate uh, Administration. And uh, you can get that loan and that information through um, your local lender. So that information is on the county website and it should be on linkinglewiscounty.com. Um, let's see, the state budget uh, did pass last week. Um, we were quite pleased to see that the Medicaid cost shift was not included. We did our job to uh, convince the state to keep the cap. Um, I wasn't sure that was gonna happen, but, but it has, and that's definitely a good thing. That is, was something that would have really changed the dynamic of county finances in the long run in a very negative way. Um, that's not to say there isn't plenty of bad things in the county budget, there are. Um, we will uh, adjust, uh, address those as they come along. There's a cost shift to counties for local hospital aid. Um, no offense to, to Jerry, but that's something that we're used to. We, we support our hospital all the time. So um, I'm sure we'll be able to handle that. Um, the other thing is that the uh, budget was passed with a provision where the governor has basically three periods of time where if revenues don't meet projections, they can make cuts, universal cuts across the board without the legislator weighing in. Um, that's something that is unprecedented. It gives the governor extraordinary power to make cuts to local reimbursements and local services. The first period is April 1st to April 30th. Um, so we're in it right now. Uh, the second period is May 1st to June 30th. So, you know, April 30th, we might hear about some cuts. June 30th, we might hear about some cuts. And then the rest of the state fiscal year is the last period. Um, so we just have to keep our eyes on that. It's, it's going to be like budget season uh, in Albany is year round now. So constantly advocating, constantly um, making sure that we're vigilant and paying attention and that key county programs are not cut too drastically. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say is we do have um, Ashley uh, and Jerry on the line. If there's any questions regarding the COVID-19 and the county's response, um, Ashley and Jerry are available to take those questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. County Treasurer Report, Eric. Are you on? Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few notes. Uh, one, I've not provided you a written statement of our balances. I will get back to that in the future at a, at our, a next formal meeting. There really have not been any changes in our reserve balances at this point in the year. Uh, I did want to follow up. Uh, Phil reminded me of a question you had from earlier in the year about the county depositing our funds with Carthage Federal and or a credit union. Um, I apologize for not getting back to you on that earlier, but that is not allowed uh, by state law. Um, so we are not able to do that, unfortunately. Um, the, the state does not look at credit unions and savings banks in the same way that they look at a regular commercial bank. Uh, and I think the last note I would make is just that I am working on uh, some estimates and things that we need to consider from a budget perspective given the COVID-19 situation. Uh, as you probably would guess, that's a very challenging thing to estimate, but it's certainly something that Ryan and I have been talking about and that we really need to make sure we're focused on as the, as the next few months go on. Um, so I will, I will get uh, something out to you on that soon that you can take a look at and we'll need to just continue to monitor that and put some thought into our county financial situation and what types of changes, if any, we should consider. Uh, one note I think I would highlight, um, sales tax obviously is one of the biggest uh, numbers that could be influenced 
uh, and, and, a, and an amount, a dollar amount that um, is not static in our budget. I mean, our property taxes are in theory not going to change, but our sales tax number can change significantly. Um, so that's one we need to keep an eye on. To date, um, through actually today, um, we are ahead of budget, or I'm sure, let me say we are ahead of last year's pace for sales tax collection by almost $200,000. So right now we're tracking well um, in comparison to our prior years for sales tax. So that will help to give us a little bit of a cushion as we see what the negative impact is um, in the future. Um, that are, those are some updates I would give you and I'll take any questions if there are any. Any questions for Eric? Yeah, Eric? Great calls, sir. I just got one question. At, will you have um, will you have the sales tax revenue uh, um, that we we took in for March and and April by June, our June meeting? I would have to say first that I am, don't yet have a feel for how the state reporting or, or remittance of those funds to us occurs. I, I, I think my answer to that uh, might be no. Um, the next sales tax collection date is, let me think, is March, April, I'm sorry, is April, May, June. So sales taxes paid in by businesses will next occur in June. So that's when um, this period will be, the businesses will be paying in in June. So we won't get any information until after June, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. So again, it's, it's definitely going to be, it's going to be difficult to get a handle on this because of that lag and when businesses report their sales taxes. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Eric? If not, we'll move on to report of the financial rules committee per rule seven, Cassandra. The financial rules completely report that they have examined the claims presented for payment and the total amount of $1,767,529.47 and recommend that they be audited and allowed for the amounts claimed. Need a motion? Tom. Hi, Tom. Second by Greg. Greg. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. We move on right to the resolutions. This one is auditing and allowing claims in the amount of $1,767,529.47. Moved by Ron. Second by Bill. Greg. Do I have a second? I'll do it. Greg. Greg. And that's a roll call. Legislator King. Yes. Legislator Calzer. Yes. Legislator Chartrand. Yes. Legislator Burns. Yes. Legislator Hathaway. Yes. Legislator LaSchultz. Yes. Legislator Gilbert. Yes. Legislator Morahan. <clears throat> Legislator Morahan. Yes. Legislator Osborne? Yes. Legislator Dahlhoff? Yes. Resolution in, in adopting and otherwise treating local law number 3-2020. So I'd like to make a few comments on this uh, to clear up some misconceptions and provide some clarity. This involves three individuals. Two of the individuals were supposed to be done in the budget last fall. And because we were busy with other topics, it got missed. The third person, um, it's a contract 
uh, obligation that we that came from when that person was hired. So out of the three, well, two of these people are not really getting a raise. One of the individuals um, is not receiving an increase. It's merely uh, adjusting the vacation accrual for that person. Uh, the second person is not truly a raise. It was a contract negotiation uh, that she would receive uh, extra money uh, if she got through the uh, the um, initial six months. The third person is uh, getting a raise. Um, that is the only one that's truly a raise. All of these um, subjects or discussions are, um, are retroactive to the 1st of January. So it doesn't really matter when we do this, we can do it now or we can hold off and do it in a month or two, but the uh, dollar amounts uh, will remain the same regardless of when we do it. So having said that, does anyone else have any comments? Larry, you st okay, you still there? Yes. Okay, this is Dick, Larry. Uh, I agree with the comments that you made earlier, and uh, I apologize to the individuals that I, at least as one legislator, didn't take care of this or see that it got taken care of when it should have been, which would have been January. And I believe if this was done in January, it wouldn't have been an issue as of this time. And actually, when we discussed this, the virus was not a, not even an issue at that time when we when we thoroughly discussed whether we should do this or not. Thank you, Phil. That was my thought. But on the other hand, there is the 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 optics of the situation as well. The current situation. Well, this is Ron. Uh, I think these people. What the hell was that? <laughs> I said, this is Ron. Uh, uh, I just think uh, we got some quality people that we're talking about here, in my opinion. And uh, as I recall, these um, increases weren't exorbitant. And I would prefer that we pass these things, get beyond it. Um, I forgot to uh, ask for uh, someone to move this. I can't understand. I need to uh, need a motion to move this. I will. I'll move Gary. it. Moved by Ron. Second by Gary. Gary. Okay, now we can continue on with the discussion if anyone has anything. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add um, something to the discussion as well. Um, I, it's also important to remember that because these are appointed officials that the procedure involved us having to first set the public hearing. So that was in last month's uh, board resolutions. So this issue, as, as both uh, Mr. Chartrand and Mr. Hathaway noted, the, the discussions came out of uh, the, the group of legislators in January and then was brought forward. It was put on for the, um, the March meeting to set the public hearing for now. And it's just really the timing that is involved because we have to do it by, by a local law. Thank you. Any other discussions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. It's roll call, isn't it? Yes. I didn't I hear who it was. It fell. <laughs> Yes. Doing a roll call on the local law. Oh. 
if you mute Larry's iPad, it might help. Or move the mic away from the speaker. Is it muted? Okay, so legislative Yes. Legislator Hines. Yes. Legislator Chartrand. Yes. Legislator Calzer. Yes. Legislator Osborne. Yes. Legislator Schultz. Yes. Legislator Gilbert. Was that was that me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Legislator Moran. Yeah. Legislator King. Who? King. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I need to recuse myself on the No, it's not. Oh, Well, we asked earlier if anyone has any questions in the packet, and if so, we will pull out that resolution. Um, if they're in the remainder of them, we'll, we will do as a slate. So are there any re resolutions in the remainder of the packet that anyone would like to pull for further discussion? I would... Larry, Go can ahead. you hear me? This is Andrea. Can you speak up, Andrea? I can't hear you. I'm on top of the computer. I need to recuse myself from Resolution 84. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So are there any other resolutions that someone would like to pull and uh, we'll, for discussion? I, I wouldn't want to pull one, but I would ask Mr. Kayer to uh, give me a little more insight on the, the, the clerk resolution up for the clerks at the hospital. I'm not against it. I just don't understand it. There we go. All right. Yeah, I can, I can do that. We are, we are transitioning. Um, a position that historically has been a clerk and recognizing its um, responsibilities as a healthcare system, we're probably uh, late on doing this. Um, so we're creating a new title to reflect the appropriate job duties and classification of the registration and ancillary department. This change would affect the clerk title and handles the beginning of the revenue cycle piece for the health system. So to say it more simply, you come to the hospital and you register for whatever action you're going to be involved in, that begins the revenue cycle management process in healthcare. Individuals who do that need a, a fair amount of training and need to be incredibly accurate in their work. There's this notion of eliminating rework in revenue cycle management. And oftentimes when there's failure, it happens right at the beginning of the process. Position has also um, been a position that's been difficult to recruit to and, and keep the employees because once they're in that role, they very quickly realize they can go to other positions in the health system and increase their wage. We are wanting, and we have a, a core group right now that actually has been in place for a bit, but we have three full-time openings that we are unable to fill. So um, our HR person has worked with the county's HR leadership, started with Chris, and uh, the, this you know moved forward. And we went a civil service process um, to review the position description. So if you want, so that's kind of why we're, we're moving the, 
the position to a new title, which reflects its professional component that is more involved than when the position was more was created sometimes. So there is a change in salary, and that change in salary currently as a patient access as a clerk is uh, the range is 1356 through 1752. And with the change, if it's approved, the salary would move to a low of 1475 to a high of 1948. Based on the current hours uh, that we have scheduled for the position, on an annualized basis, it's a, a change of $60,000. Will it definitely impact this year's budget? The answer is no based on the number of open positions we have and the fact that it is now April. Um, so that's kind of the backdrop and what the cost will be moving forward and why we are doing it. Um, I, that's, Phil, did that's that answer fine. your question? It very thoroughly, no problem. Thank you. Okay, Jim. thank you. Any the, only, no. the only other comment I, I is not a question, it's more a comment now. Um, in accepting the bids for the highway garage and the repointing of the two, two areas, I think we perhaps should uh, be conscious of, of essential work and maybe not start that right away. I, I agree. I understand your concern, but um, I think we um, are, if we do that, we'll just continue to be behind the curve uh, by not awarding these things in a timely that's manner. That's not what I said. I'm not okay. saying I'm don't award it. I'm saying don't start performing the work right away until okay the, i i am all for awarding the 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 bids no problem there i'm just saying let's maybe we should hold back on starting the work yep. so, can they legally start it the contracts that That's were what i was wondering as well give them till the end of the summer so as long as they're okay which they must be contractually um you know we can start this ideally we would have loved to have start you know now tomorrow but um we we can wait until the end of summer that's when these bids are good for and the contracts are good for so um we have till you know the end of august september to to get it done but yeah good point can, well, you know, wait a two. second wait a second can i can i just um chime in here the um resolution 85 and it went out in the rfp that we wanted a a date you know uh, as to when it was going to be completed so th the that resolution says that it is to be completed by the end of summer of 2020 so i don't know if they could really start at the end of summer they won't have enough time to do it. I don't think we may have to perhaps speak to them because uh, don't forget, maybe these people had some other work um, and they bid on this based upon the time frame. So we, yeah. Okay, so Joan, we can um, always extend it though, right, Joan? Well, I think we owe them the courtesy of calling them and, and making sure that we can do that, yes. But the way everything's at now, this is Jerry. Are they going to even be able to start it with uh, what we have going on? Um, we need a conversation I, with that company. We, both, we need a conversation with all of that. I didn't hear Ryan. I didn't either. He said we need a conversation with all of the vendors. Right. Yeah. So. But to answer Jerry's question, I know that some other um, government entities are doing construction work. So I, I believe maybe they, they got a pass for, to do work uh, as essential work. So we'll have to check into that as well. 
Yeah, this is Dick. The pool, the pool in Watertown didn't make it, and these are kind of in the same type of work. Well, we can we can check it. I mean, if uh, yeah, and if we got to extend it till next year, that's we'll do that too. But uh, have them, you know, try to get it done if everything go. I can support that. So I would suggest then um, that we pull resolute pull out for a separate vote so we can add some additional, if you, you want to make some additional um, uh, amendments to it, I would pull out resolution 85 and 86. So we can have that yeah. um, in case anybody wants to make amendments. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the rest of the resolution? Mr. Chairman, I'll need to abstain. I think it was resolution 98, the one dealing with changes to the Article 10 citing process. Okay, um, Ian, do you want to abstain from number 90 also? That's the one um, appropriating funds for the VA. Oh, yeah, I should do that one as well. I think I, I might have voted on that one in committee, but I should probably abstain now. Okay. Get your record straight, Gilbert. <laughs> Well, how much money are we dealing with? <laughs> All right, so if uh, everyone's comfortable at this point, uh, could I have a motion to move the resolutions as a slate? I will move. move. 85 second. Uh, Randy moves, second by Ron. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose. Okay, so the slate carries. Now we're going back to 85. Um, Joan, I don't know what your thoughts are, but if we were to strike that last sentence that says to be completed by the end of summer 2020, would that clean that up? Uh, or to authorize the county attorney to um, discuss uh, and um, a period of time uh, extending the time that it'll be completed in light of the, the COVID situation. I have yeah. one question. Yeah. When, when you say this, uh, the end of summer 2020, is that a date certain? Well, it says in the resolution to be completed by the end of, the, of summer 2020. So is that a date? What's that? Is that a date? Yes. On the calendar. Okay. Just wondering. It don't yeah. result this. <clears throat> John. Yes. Whatever you do, I don't want to get in to where they're having to add add mix to the mortar. What it. does that mean? You well, mean because of weather? To be well, the freezing yeah. temperatures and you add chemicals. Right. I feel it's better without the chemicals. Okay. Great. Joan, I got a question. Do they need to secure their performance bonds before they make the bid, or does that happen after they're awarded the bid? I wonder if that might be an issue for them, too. Um, that I don't um, know. Um, probably Matt O'Connor knows, but I, I don't have that information. Okay. Well, well when, I got a question. When were they going to start the work? I mean, that might play a role in this whole thing. They might not have even planned on starting until June. Well, that could be. So that's why we want to have that conversation with them and see if they, they think they're going to be able to do it um, if they can't work on it right now. Because otherwise, if, we make, if there's going to be changes, I'm sure they're going to, they're going to change their uh, bid, too. Price. Yeah, price is going to change. Yeah. Just ask them the date they were planning on starting. Yeah. 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 It just calls for discussion, that's all. 
Okay. Can we, Joan, could we say something to the effect of uh, uh, to the sat to the to be completed to the satisfaction of the county attorney? Something to that effect after discussions with the county attorney? A date to be completed um, based on a, yeah, that would be fine. That's you mean a, com a completion date? Agreed upon by the county attorney and chairman of the committee. Jerry ought to be involved in that. Well, so should Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Good point. Okay, Joan, do you have some guidance on how we uh, move these forward? Language changes or what? So I'm. So my suggestion would be that. Um, in section one, that at the last sentence after uh, PSB parentheses, will take out to be completed by the end of the summer 2020 and put in to be com with a completion date to be determined after consultation with uh, the uh, maintenance and buildings director with um, the chairman of the general services committee and the county attorney. That sounds good to me. I'll make that motion. Second. Moved by Phil, who second? Dick. Dick, okay. I made that motion because I'm scared of Joan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta get in the club. Actually. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do you want to vote on, is that the only change for 85? We can vote on 85 now, Joan? So that was 85, right? was 85. Yeah. So well, now. Now you just do the same for 86. Uh, right. Yeah. We're voting on the amendment. Okay, so we're moving on to 86. This one's two phases. Right. Completion date, though. Two different. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's two different bids in here for, for one building. So you have Actor Corporation and Continental. Um, so actors work for the glass block windows. Um, is to be completed by the end of spring week i could suggest the same we use the same language for for the end of both section a and section b as we just did in um the prior resolution that works we have a motion to that effect moved Ron, second by um, um further discussion um yeah, I only got one question. Um, pretty much that abatement for this asbestos and stuff like that's going to have to be done with a lead. So they're still going to have to be ahead of the other group. Right. right. And we want to get that done before winter sets in, too, if we can. Yeah. So, you know, okay. we can make those calls tomorrow and see what we can come up with. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, other business. We have uh, proclamations. What about 98 to 90? We still need to do those, or they're all they're all done, Jerry. Okay, okay. Yeah, we just make the notation that uh, Ian abstained on those, as Andrea did on the other one. Okay, thank you. 
the late resolutions were included with this blanket motion. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So, the first proclamation is to commend Mary Jo Burkhard, Lewis County Probation Director. Whereas Mary Jo Burkhard was appointed as a Lewis County Probation Officer effective September 2nd, 1980, and whereas thereafter Mary Jo was appointed Director of Lewis County Probation on January 1st, 2012, serving as the first female Director of Probation in Lewis County. And whereas throughout her nearly 40 years of service as a probation officer, Mary Jo was an ardent advocate for her staff and the clients served by the probation office. Her objective throughout her tenure was to work hard to enhance and improve the quality of life of the hundreds of probationers who came through her office. And whereas through her tireless persistence and genuine care for the safety of her staff, Mary Jo collaborated with Lewis County legislators, state probation and local law enforcement to secure tactical vests, emergency radios, and defensive tactics training for all probation officers. And whereas Mary Jo's dedication to and belief in the value of probation is reflected in the number of hours she spent day and night, weekdays and weekends above and beyond the normal workday in order to assist those to whom her office was tasked to monitor and aid, her work ethic is a model followed by her entire staff and others in county employment. And whereas during her tenure as director, Mary Jo implemented office policies and incentives for the staff to make sure they invested in their own health and positive work habits. Mary Jo's leadership style of inclusiveness is demonstrated by the cohesiveness of her staff and the seamless transition at this time of her retirement. And whereas we wish to recognize and commend Mary Jo for her conscientious, persistent, and compassionate leadership skills and knowledge on the right path to becoming a more productive that would further during the investigation. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Lewis County Board of Legislators, I, Lawrence L. Dalhoff, Chairman of the Board, hereby record our utmost respect and appreciation for the honorable public service provided by Mary Jo Burkhart to the county for her nearly 40 years as a Lewis County Probation Officer and its director. <coughs> We extend to Mary Jo best wishes in her much deserved retirement. Proclamation commemorating April as Child Abuse and Awareness Month. Whereas all children of New York State and Lewis County have the right to be raised in a safe and secure environment that prepares them for a future of opportunity and promise. Tragically, child abuse and neglect threaten the lives and health of thousands of our state's children who are subjected to verbal, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse, exploitation, and neglect. And whereas it is vital for communities to create par partnerships with families, social service agencies, school, faith communities, civic organizations, law enforcement, and businesses that provide supportive resources and reinforce protective measures to ensure the health and well-being of children and families to reduce incidences of child abuse. And whereas all those in Lewis County share the responsibility to prevent child abuse by reporting suspected child abuse or maltreatment to the statewide central register of child abuse and maltreatment, the state's child abuse hotline that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to mandated reporters, persons required by law to report suspected cases of child abuse, as well as non-mandated reporters, including the public, Mandated reporters can also benefit from accessibility to online training and introduce neglect and maltreatment identification. And whereas during National Child Abuse Prevention Month, observed each April, all New Yorkers are encouraged to direct their attention to this critical issue and to support programs that promote the safety and security of children. We also take the opportunity to acknowledge the many dedicated caseworkers throughout our county who devote countless hours to ensuring the welfare and well-being of our children. Now, therefore, I, Lawrence L. Dalhoff, Chairman of the Lewis County Board of Legislators, 
do hereby proclaim the month of April 2020 as Child Abuse Prevention and Awareness Month in Lewis County. Proclamation commemorating April as Fair Housing Month. Whereas the Fair Housing Act enacted, Act enacted on April 11th, 1968, enshrined into federal law the goal of eliminating racial segregation and ending housing discrimination in the United States. Okay. And whereas the Fair Housing Act focused on race, color, religion, sex, familial status, national origin, and disability and permits recipients of federal funding to permanently further fair housing in their community. And whereas Lewis County and the Jefferson Lewis River Realtors are committed to the mission and intent of Congress in New York State to provide fair and equal housing opportunities for all. And whereas our social fabric, the economy, health, and environment are strengthened in the United States. And whereas more than 50 years after the passage of the Fair Housing Act, discrimination persists. That's that he was ready to go to some court and help it come to jail. And whereas acts of housing discrimination are barriers to housing opportunities in the trade of the union, related to the communication of the arms and growth. And whereas the national. Hold on a second, please. Cassandra, somebody, Cassandra, somebody else is speaking in the background. If everybody could mute, because we're trying to record this. So please mute if you know how to do that. And everybody, make sure nobody else is in the room speaking with you so she can finish this. Thank you. Whereas the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics commits all realtors to providing equal professional services without discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, familial status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and national origin. Now, therefore, I, Lawrence L. Dalhoff, Chairman of the Lewis County Board of Legislators, do hereby proclaim April 2020 as Fair Housing Month in Lewis County as an inclusive community committed to fair housing and to promoting appropriate activities by private and public entities intended to provide and advocate for equal housing opportunities for all residents and prospective residents of Lewis County. Thank you, Cassandra. Is there any other business anyone would like to bring forward? Larry, this I, is I just Dick. got one more quick question. Okay. Bill? Go ahead, Dick. Okay. A uh, couple of things on the calendar. I thought the youth borough was canceled on the 15th. It is. Is the 21st going to be a teleconference or don't we know yet? Uh, we're not sure. My question. Okay. I'll wait till you find out. Thank you. Okay. That, that was my question as well. I was kind of hoping we were going to do a teleconference and not a phone conference. Okay. You, this, you like the Zoom, Phil? Is this okay? Yeah. I think, it, you know, we got, we got a few bugs, but I liked it. it, it okay. It's good. Does, did anybody else like it? Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Is, um, would you like to do this for the committee meetings? rather than uh, waiting to see if we could do a uh, on-site? You prefer to go this route? I think we ought to plan on this and if, if okay. on-site works, then we could change it. But I think let's well, set a plan. Ryan just, Ryan just mentioned that um, Pause New York is on until April 29th. So uh, exactly. that's the best, best answer. Yep. yep. Okay. I'm no one else has anything else. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Go <laughs> through, Ryan. Ryan, second by Greg. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Y'all. Bye. Night. Stay safe. Good night. Good night, sweet prince. Take Caitlin. I'm afraid of you too. Ron, do you know right, how to get Phil. off the meeting? <laughs> what?